Yeah, yeah, yeah. Processed foods are bad for us. But do you know why? A new study seems to answer that question, and that's what we're talking about on this week's Wednesday Checkup. Researchers and doctors like myself really do advocate to limit the amount of processed foods that we eat in our diets. The reason we do this is because the research has shown that those who eat a diet rich in processed foods generally have more diseases, more likely to be obese, and live shorter lives. What we haven't had up until this point is a study proving a causal relationship, a randomized controlled study. In fact, the entire field of nutrition is a mess because we lack these types of studies. But now the NIH has conducted a random controlled study and has proved with a causal relationship that eating a diet rich in highly processed foods causes weight gain and it's for a reason you may not even suspect let's jump right in and talk about this study it was a rather small one but it was done with very very high quality there were 10 male participants and 10 female they were randomized to participate in either two weeks of a high processed diet or a low processed diet and then they flipped the two groups. This is really powerful because not only do you have a randomized controlled sample, but they actually lived in the facility for the entire month. This doesn't happen with nutritional research. It's really, really important to note that both the processed and unprocessed meals were controlled for protein, carbs, fats, calories, fiber content, and participants could eat as little or as much as they wanted. Let me give you an example to make this a little bit more digestible. For breakfast, an ultra-processed meal would be a bagel with cream cheese and turkey bacon. A minimally processed meal would be oatmeal with bananas, walnuts, and skim milk. If you're wondering what ingredients make a food highly processed, hydrogenated oils, high fructose corn syrup, flavorings, emulsifiers, these things generally don't exist in nature. That's why they're not labeled whole foods. So what did this study actually find out? Those who ate a high processed diet actually gained a pound of weight per week. And then when they were eating the unprocessed diet, they lost a pound per week. That's a big difference. The reason why those who were eating a high processed food diet gained weight is because they over ate on average 500 extra calories a day. Does eating a diet high in ultra processed foods cause weight gain? The answer is yes. What this study wasn't designed for was to find out why, but I do have some theories for you. One, ultra processed foods taste better and are more palatable. I mean, there's industries where millions of dollars are spent to hack foods to taste better and feel better on your tongue. It's crazy. Two, ultra processed foods can be more addicting. Maybe the idea of the gut brain connection comes into play here. The bacteria that live inside your gut that love this processed foods start sending signals to your brain. It's not that crazy of an idea and there are initial theories on it. Three, with proteins being the most satiating macronutrient and ultra processed foods generally having less of it, it causes you to overeat. This is called the protein leverage hypothesis, where if you don't get enough protein, you're gonna overeat carbs and fats to make up for it. In fact, that's what happened in this study. Those in the ultra high processed foods overeat fats and carbs, but not really proteins. What's crazy to me is how we in America overeat these highly processed foods all the time. And I began to wonder, how do we get here? I came up with four pretty good reasons. See if you agree with me. One, they store well. I mean, we've all seen those videos of the fast food burgers sitting on a counter for days, weeks, even months, and it doesn't go bad. Ugh. Two, they're absolutely delicious. Like I said earlier, there's people making millions on how to make that hamburger, that candy, taste that much better. Yum. Three, they're generally cheaper, which is unfair to those of low socioeconomic status. If you're poor, you're forced to eat low quality foods. That's horrible. Four, they're widely available. In areas where malnutrition used to be a problem because of under eating, now that we have these highly processed foods, we still have malnutrition just because of obesity. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not a fan of nutritional research, but when it's this level of quality, you best bet I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> and if you wanna see my nutrition playlist and learn everything you need to know about eating healthy, click here and stay happy and healthy.